Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the concept-based MCQ discussion. Okay, today we will discuss on the topic brachial plexus clinic anatomy. First, we will see the question. Then we will discuss the uh, relevant concept. Then we'll come back to the question to answer it. Question one is the select the incorrect statement about the hips point. So option one, point on up, point of upper trunk where six now meet. Then option two, suprascapular now and now to subclavius arises from here. Option three, mode of injury in hips paralysis is fall on the shoulder. Option four, patient present with loss of adduction in the shoulder when this point is injured. Okay. So hips point is the point in the upper trunk of the brachial plexus where the six nerve meet. Six nerve mean not the actual nerves. Here we see C5, C6 roots. Okay. Ventral primary rami. Okay. That meets to form a upper trunk. From there, there is two division, anterior and posterior division. So all these four are considered as a four nerves. And there is two named nerves are the upper one is the suprascapular and the lower nerve to subclavius. One is supra and another is sub. Okay. Suprascapular and nerve to subclavius. So if there is any injury in this point, it leads to hips paralysis. So when this injury occur, the mode of injury is uh, when the person is fall on the shoulder or there is undue separation between the head from the shoulder. Okay. If there is undue separation between the head and the shoulder, it leads to breakage of the upper trunk that is the hips point. In other case, during the birth injury, if the uh, in case of shoulder dystocia or difficult delivery, when the head is abducted too much, again it leads to hips paralysis. So there is a typical deformity which will appear in the hips paralysis is known as policeman or waiters or porters hand. Okay, see the attitude of the limb. Okay, so this is more important for you uh, in the MCQ point of view. You should know what are all the muscle paralyzed. So what are all the action they can't able to do. So what is the deformity which is happening in the limb. We'll see one by one. First the shoulder joint. In the shoulder joint, the deformity. Okay, the shoulder is in what position it is. The deformity is in the adduction and medial rotation. Shoulder is adducted and medial ro medially rotated. This is due to paralysis of deltoid. Okay, so deltoid is supplied by axillary nerve, root value again C5, C6. So when it is injured in the hips point, deltoid is paralyzed. The function of deltoid is initiation of abduction in the shoulder joint. So when the uh, deltoid is, is doing the abduction from 15 to 90 degree, so this is the main muscle which is doing the abduction. So when this is paralyzed, the shoulder will go for adduction. Then medial rotation is due to paralysis of the muscle inserting into the greater tubercle that is SIT, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor muscle. Okay, so these are the muscle performing the lateral rotation in the shoulder. When it is paralyzed, it leads to medially rotated arm. That is the deformity. In the elbow, you can see very well, this is extension. So, apart from that, in the forearm, you can see it is a pronated. Okay, these two are due to paralysis of biceps brachii. Again, supplied by the muscular cutaneous nerve. Okay, same due to C5, C6 root injured. Muscular cutaneous nerve also in, uh, damaged. So, the biceps is paralyzed. So, biceps is a muscle which helps in the flexion of elbow. Then, also it's a powerful uh, supinator of the forearm when the arm is flexed, semi-flexed. Okay. So, these are the attitude due to paralysis of biceps bracket. Then, the cutaneous uh, sensation, there will be mild loss of uh, cutaneous sensation in the upper outer region of the arm due to the involvement of C5 and C6 root. That is the dermatome in this region. So, out of this question can be asked in multiple ways. What are the muscle involved or 
what are the actual deformity here the highlighted are the deformity due to loss of other movements for example if the arm is adducted what is lost abduction is lost if it is medially rotated the lateral rotators lateral rotation of the shoulder is lost okay so if the elbow is extended the flexion is lost same if it is pronated supination is lost so you should aware of what are the things are lost what are the things are there so that you can answer it in a clear manner coming back to the question so here you should see it is the question is as incorrect statement regarding the hips point so it is in the upper trunk and six nerves are meeting yes it is right supra scapular nerve and nerve to septic clavis yes one supra and sub this is also right then mode of injury is fall on the shoulder it leads to conduce touching at the level of neck so this is also right patient presents with loss of adduction in the shoulder joint so they will come with the adduction because there is loss of abduction so this is the incorrect statement so the correct answer is the uh, option number 4 okay so this is how you have to rule out once you know the concept it's easy for you to rule out moving moving on to the next question all of the following are features of clumpy paralysis except the option one is claw hand next sensory loss in the medial border of the hand third wrist drop four horner syndrome okay first we will see what is clumpy paralysis clumpy paralysis is the injury of the lower trunk okay c8 and t1 when the lower trunk is injured it leads to clumpy paralysis here uh, there is undue stretching of arm from the trunk like that there is undue abduction or when some person is falling from top if he is holding some stretcher tree or something it leads to undue pressure on the axilla okay so finally the inferior trunk will be or the lower trunk will be damaged again here during birth injury if the uh, baby hand is pulled more then it leads to the same kind of injury in the lower trunk the roots involved were c8 and t1 so first thing is the claw hand claw hand is due to paralysis of all the intrinsic muscles of hand lumbricals interosseous okay then uh, here the flexors of uh, fingers wrist okay so when these things are paralyzed it leads to claw hand okay there is an detailed video about claw hand or ulnar nerve injury i will give the link in the description so this is due to claw hand is due to the involvement of c8 and t1 that is forming the lower trunk then loss of sensation in the medial border of the forearm and hand again the dermatome is c8 and t1 then uh, the third thing is the horner syndrome okay we all know the sympathetic outflow from the uh, thoracic uh, spinal cord is starting from t1 to l1 okay so this t1 when it is damaged roots this t1 root when it is damaged from this t1 the sympathetic supply is going towards the uh, superior cervical ganglia and then it's supplying all over the head and neck okay so when this t1 is damaged here the sympathetic supply to the uh, ipsilateral side of the face is also affected which leads to horner syndrome again uh, i will give in the description link there is detailed video about the horner syndrome so horner syndrome basically patient present with ptosis and hydrosis okay coming back to the question here they are again asking all our features of clumpy's paralysis which is not okay claw hand is a feature sensory loss in the middle border that is t1 uh, dermatome this is also a feature wrist drop no we won't see wrist drop in clumpy's paralysis okay only claw hand will be there and horner syndrome which is present due to sympathetic fiber from the t1 is injured okay so the answer here is the wrist drop hope uh, this video is helpful for you if you want to uh, learn anatomy uh, mcqs based on some concept let me know in the comment section we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching the video if there is 
any doubt in this video you can leave in the comment section i'm planning to post the similar concepts of clinical anatomy in this channel if you want any particular topic in the clinical anatomy let me know in the comment section thank you